So as I promised, we are going to make a song start to finish. It's probably gonna be multiple parts. So don't expect the whole thing to be finished in one video today. Uh, we're just gonna see where this goes and I'm gonna explain everything, literally every single thing as I do it so you guys can understand how I make music. So first thing I do when I open up a project is I go to the master channel, I go to the fruity limiter right here and I set all of these parameters like this. So that just means everything's gonna stay under zero dB, which is good for us. And uh, I've been sitting on this pad for a couple weeks now. I really like how it sounds it's from the Skybreak sample pack that he just released. And so I wanna make a color-based song based off of this pad. So I'll just play the first couple seconds. So the first thing I usually do is obviously add it to the mixer, and then I'm gonna load up one of my channel states, which is called Atmospheres. And all this is, is it just names it to Atmos, and then it's got a low cut in it. So it's gonna get rid of a lot of the bass. And then usually to make songs sound like my own, I pitch them upwards. So what I'm gonna do in this one is I'm gonna try 150 cents first. So we're gonna go up one semitone and then go up a half semitone, and I'm gonna see how that sounds. And so what I'm doing right now in finding the pitch of the sample is I'm trying to find where the bass note is gonna be perfect. That's why I'm trying to get this in the key of maybe E or F, that would probably work the best for me without it sounding too weird for the sample. Well, I actually like that one a lot, it sounds pretty cool. Um, but what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna experiment with a, a formant shifter a little bit because I wanna see how the formant shifting is gonna affect the high pitch sample. So that means maybe we can actually go up to uh, the key of F here, which would be this, and it won't sound too high end. I'll mute and unmute so you can hear what I did. So I actually think I am gonna use that because I think it sounds really cool. So uh, I left the formant shift at negative 2.21 here. This is the M auto pitch plugin. I think the plugin is free actually. I don't even think you have to pay for it. So uh, you can just Google search that, you'll find it. And then uh, I'm gonna OTT this and I'm just gonna bring up the high ends a little bit. <coughs> Sorry, I just ate a donut. And I just wanna remove a little bit of mids from the pad. So I think that's a cool little intro, but what I'm gonna do is just uh, gradually bring in the volume a little bit, right? Cause it's a little loud at the start and we want this to be the intro of the song. So I'm gonna make an automation clip and then just have the volume kind of sweep in like this. Now I'm gonna try it. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it, but uh, I made a video called like how to make cool intros. And so I'm gonna use that method here. I'll just link that video if you wanna watch it. It's too much to explain right now. Um, but basically we're just going to add like an LFO onto this. See how that sounds. I don't want it to be like fully super harsh like that. So I'm just going to add it a little bit and see if that blends in smoothly. So this is what I came up with. I think that's actually pretty cool. So uh, what I did was I used the mix volume of the LFO tool to not make it as harsh. All right, so this is normally how I do stuff is uh, when I'm building an intro of a song, I just look for some samples of chords or maybe leads or something like that that I found on Splice to use as inspiration for my track. So I'm not gonna steal the sample, right? I'm not gonna take a sample, drag it in and just leave it. That's not how this works. I'm gonna take the sample, drag it in, and then eventually make my own melody out of that sample. So we're gonna use the sample as a little bit of a guide, right, to get us started on something, and that's gonna help us craft a song. So I'm gonna listen to some pianos. All right, so I found this piano, I like it. I don't know if I love it, but I like it, and it sounds like this. So 
I'm just going to add that piano in for now. We'll keep it there. Uh, we'll see what we end up doing with it. So now uh, we have our intro, right? Our little intro thing we made. Then we have this little build up part. These are our first like 10 seconds of the song. Now we need the listener. Let's try, let's say, let's do it this way. Let's say the listener is trying to create a picture or a story in their mind when they're listening to this song. We need to transition each piece smoothly from one to the other. So what we're gonna do here is add a riser. Risers are just like white noise sweeping sounds. So for example, I'm gonna add a white noise riser to this and we're gonna stretch it to this right here. That's very good. Right, I just wanna get it to the sample. And then I'm gonna add a bunch of reverb on this sweeping noise because we're gonna use that to help transition the song from the intro into the piano section. So again, I'm just gonna load up a reverb chain that I've already built. This is the preset and this is how it's cut. I'm gonna cut it actually a little more harshly like this right here. And so now it has become this. Right, so lots and lots of reverb on it. All right, so very nice. Honestly, it could be like a little louder. It doesn't need to be that quiet. So I'm just gonna move it up to that. Now, this is when the fun stuff starts. So. I'm going to start searching for a bunch of samples that I like. This is usually how I kind of get a foundation is um, I can already, I already had an idea before I started making this video. So I know what I want, which is something very sparkly, very crystally. And so I'm going to narrow down my sample search to the packs that I know have crystally and sparkly sounds and then i'm going to listen in there for samples of what i want to be in this song and that's going to get me started with a routine of where to work from i wonder what it would sound like in reverse so now what i'm going to do right is add that in and we're going to create uh, another atmospheres channel and what i'm going to do with this atmospheres channel is I'm going to load a reverb on it. I just like to use Fruity Reverb. I'm gonna load the ambience preset, tweak some of these settings to run right here because I know that that sounds good for what I'm looking for. Do something like this, right? Um, you wanna make sure that the reverb is after the filter, by the way. Um, and so now this is gonna be a little bit more muffled and it's gonna have a lot of reverb on it. So I added that because in this pad, there's this little part where the high ends dip and I want this to like be in there and fill up the space. So I'm just gonna extend the reverb a little bit more cause I want it to be like very, very pronounced and we'll see how the volumes are, but basically we've just added more texture to the intro. But now I'm just gonna keep going through and I'm gonna keep finding little samples like that that I think fit the song really well. And we're just gonna keep adding those to make this intro sound more interesting. One thing I love to do when making my songs is to pretend like I am in some sort of a story or some sort of a picture or a painting. All right, so here's a really cool image. This is something I found on Google a while ago. It's quite low res, but this is just what I'm picturing when I'm making this song. So I'm gonna play the song and I'll have you listen to the image. And that's just what I hear with this image. So we're gonna make this song, right? From this series, from this point on, we're gonna make this song to this image. All right, so I think we're actually doing a pretty good job of matching that image so far. It needs more sparkly things. The drop's gonna be very big from what I picture. It's gonna have lots of color-based sounds, very stab-oriented, I think. I think we just need to find some more textures, more th things to just put on top, so let's search. All right. 
I think that's a really cool sample. Let's normalize it so it's a little cleaner. That's just gonna take the waveform, take the loudest points and take the quietest points and then bring them to an even level so the sound isn't as harsh. Let's just add it in here somewhere. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is work on this little piano patch up here. So I think I'm gonna draw in some notes and um, I'm gonna change the, I like this little pluck that's on the top of this piano, but I don't like the bass notes. Um, not that they're bad, I just don't think they fit what we're making right now. So um, I'm going to uh, not use that. I'm going to open a fab filter and I'm gonna cut out the low ends here. So let's go to the low ends and let's cut this John out. And uh, we'll just start at like 200. That's a good place to get rid of some bass. And then I'm gonna add an FL keys. We're not gonna keep the FL keys. I'm just gonna add the FL keys so I can tune it nice and easily because we could just go up 50 cents and I can just draw in bass notes. So we already know we're in the key of F. And so if we go down, uh, this would be one, two, three, three, four. That would be our root bass note. So this is our root bass note. And then this would be like a, a nice little bass note to complement that. And I think I'm gonna go something like. All right, so again, I'm trying to match this image that we pulled up, right? So this image, um, it feels very color-based, very dreamy to me, but it also fe feels like very high energy, uh, very, like th there's a lot of debris moving around, um, the colors are very bright, and so it feels very airy or breath-like to me. That's the only way I can, I can explain it. So I drew up a baseline that feels very energetic. It feels like it could have a lot to it, um, but it's also, it's in the key, it's in the minor key, but it's a happy bass line, if that makes sense. Like it's got a lot of movement to it. It's not a deep, like nasty sounding bass line. So uh, this is what I came up with. And I think that should loop nicely under this. So uh, let's mute everything but the two pianos and let's see what they sound like together. It's a good foundation to start with, uh, but there's one little trick I'm gonna do here is right when this pad switches to the piano, I want the bass from the pad in the beginning, but I don't want it when the piano starts. So I am going to create an automation clip on the mute slash solo, which is this thing right here. Now I've done it the right way. It should have been like this. Very nice, so now, oh, that's a cool sample. Let's just throw it in there. Why not? I wanna make this one have like crazy reverb on it though. That's a little too much. I don't know where to put it, so let's find somewhere to put it. All right, so it's nice, but it just needs to be filtered. So let's add a low pass filter to it. So now we have this as our little intro. All right, so I've actually decided that these pianos are gonna go after this first section of pianos. I think that's gonna work a lot better. So I'm gonna clone this pattern. <laughs> okay, so I am going to clone that pattern. So we made a copy 
of the bass pattern, I should probably name it bass, is we're just gonna copy the bass notes from this. All right, so that, that's our little piano section that we're doing right there. And what we're gonna do is now transition this into the more upbeat part. So I'm gonna find a nice drum sample. I want something future garage, super sweepy, like that's the only way I can explain that. I know exactly what I'm looking for. I'm gonna go find it. There we go, I got it out. Okay, so this is what I was looking for. All right, so hopefully you guys can see the vision a little better. That is what I wanted. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the chords of the piano into something. And then after we finish that, then we'll start layering it into like actual synths and pianos. And I'm gonna draw this chord with you live so you guys can see how I structure these chords. Um, and I'll try and talk you through this. I, I currently don't have a microphone stand anymore. <laughs> so I am holding my microphone doing this. It is not exactly the most practical thing in the world, but I'm trying my best, all right? That's what matters. I'm gonna go control A and control V and go up two octaves. So now we have this. And then basically I am just gonna start drawing in notes of what I think sounds good and we just go from there. There's no music theory behind what I'm doing. I never went to school for music or anything like that. The only thing I know how to do with music is I taught myself how to play the piano at a very young age, all right? So I'm just going pressing keys, thinking, and trying to figure out what sounds good, and that's how I'm structuring my chords. So now we can add that over the future garage part. So then you're going to see the pianos are going to transition like this. I really, really like how that's coming out. So now um, what I'm going to do is... I'm gonna clone this, right? And I'm gonna start experimenting. This is a big thing with making music, right? Is you've probably seen me do this a couple times in this video already, is I'm just experimenting with trying new things, right? I'm, you know, dragging in samples that I didn't think I would use or doing chord structures that I didn't think I would use. And what I'm gonna do now is try a different pattern with the, uh, the, the, the chop of the chord, that's what I'm gonna go with, um, and just see how it sounds in thirds because I really wanna hear that. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> For an example right there, that's when trying something new didn't work. I think to make this a lot better, what we need to do is go into this piano and add a variation for the second bar. So the chord is really nice. I really like the chord. I think that's gonna suit this song very well once it's all finished. So now let's make a little arp to add some extra pizzazz to this chord, right? Let's make it sound a little bit more interesting by making an arp. Okie dokie. So 
let me just check that I'm recording. Yes, I am. Okay, so um, I have finished drawing in this melody. I think you guys are really gonna like it. I probably left in uh, me just like drawing that together. So you probably already know what some of it sounds like. This is what it sounds like all together. I think it's really, really nice. It's a really beautiful melody that I think matches this picture very well. This is what it sounds like. I'm gonna leave this for now, right? We're not gonna work on this. This first episode is just gonna be about how to structure the intro and how to get your inspiration going. That's the whole point of this. So I'm gonna leave that there and then I'm gonna add a nexus and this is gonna be that big drop, big synth. Not, not the drop of the song, but a big breakdown, like a big, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Now I'm planning on having a different chord for the piano, right? I don't want it to be a piano but I also plan on having it as a different structure but I want to hear what this sounds like with a saw so let's make a saw chord uh, I'm going to go to oscillator a and click on oscillator b and I'm going to go to 16 voices but I'm going to set it to 0.5 to start right we don't want it to be huge and then I'm just going to set the unison to one on this one I'm not going to touch anything I'll just do that for safety and then uh, we're just going to paste our chord so we're going to have I'm just going to turn it down a bit we're going to have this sound If you want to make it like Lil Uzi Vert style, just go to the Porta, go to Always, and I don't know, just play around with this knob. So I think that's going to sound cool, so I'm going to put that under the piano. Let's see what that sounds like. to make this chord cooler uh, this is what it sounds like right now to make it cooler I'm gonna add like these little notes on top all right so let's take that and let's copy it into the D tune let's see what it sounds like So now you'll see uh, kind of what my vision was. Freaking thing will not be in the right pitch. What is going on with it? Look, they don't have 50. Dude, you gotta be trolling me, man. Duh! What I'm gonna do is go into our little piano roll where we made the chord, go to this, copy this. Uh, the reason I'm doing it that way is because I'm holding my mic in the other hand, so I can't type on the keyboard. Um, and then let's add a bass in. So adding a bass, I'm gonna go to Serum. I'm gonna add the Virtual Riot Dirt Bass preset. Sounds like this. Paste the bass notes in. All right, so you have this now. Now we have to remember, our song is 50 cents up, right? Yes, Soundstorm. So we have to go up 50 cents on the fine tune. There you go. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. I just find this is the easiest. Um, and so we do that. So then we're gonna copy that. And then we're going to add the sub bass in as well. So add another serum. You can draw a square wave or a sine wave and make it yourself by doing that. All right, so seven is our sub. So I'm going to load my sub bass patch, which is this. This is my sub bass patch. This is how you get some thick 
bases with two C's. Turn that up a little bit. And then uh, you can cut it at anywhere from like 170 to 160. Let's go right in the middle. Let's do like 166 to start. Then I'm going to go back into the serum for the sub, dedicated sub. Go to global with 0%. We want this to be in mono. Just add it to the side chain real quick. For the dirt saw, we're going to go to that. And I have a preset I already made for this. Um, it just kind of squishes it a little bit. It's like this right here. I usually alter this. Um, I don't keep it in this state, but it's just easy to load this uh, this channel state. And so this is what is in it uh, with the wave shaper as well. You got the wave shaper right here. This is cut at 83. I usually cut between like 80 and 120. Now, if we put that underneath, more channel states loading in. I'm telling you guys, these are very helpful. Uh, for the pure saw, that is for the one without the detune. I'm going to load that up. And then we're going to load the one with the detune. So I have both. So all it is, is it's a low cut right here, right? With an OTT. And then if you want some delay on it, there's delay in there that you can use. Um, and then here is the side chain. It should really be like that. And then uh, I'm gonna side chain both of those. This one is literally like the exact same thing. So there's not much difference except for the way that uh, the EQ is and you don't have to use the delay, but you can if you want to. So I'm just gonna put that quietly underneath. And now you're gonna see this has incredibly, incredibly widened this whole section. I don't know how I feel about the sub. It's a little too like, well, 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 well. You guys probably can't really hear that in the YouTube video, but I can hear it really badly. So I'm gonna try and see if this fixes it. Yeah, that actually, so adjusting that to 55 on the fine actually fixed that for some reason, so. Um, I'm going to stick with that and that's where we're at so far in this. So it wasn't much, but it was really good for how I come up with ideas and how I make songs from scratch and what I'm looking to do. So we'll play from the top. Right, and then imagine there's just the coolest buildup ever. It needs some work, but the idea is there and uh, that'll get cleaned up. Um, so right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm messing around with some vocal chops over the uh, little chord break that we made. I changed the sub to a square wave that I drew in. I'll show you that right now. So it's this one right here. This is what I made. I think it just sounds cleaner. The Virtual Riot sub thing was just not working with this track. And then I also added an OTT to the master. So I just put it in slot one and I put it on 5% and like jacked this stuff all the way up. Um, and so that just makes the track sound a lot wider. So this is what we have now. <laughs> Um, so what I'm going to do now is mess around with his vocal chop and try and come up with something that I like. All right, so I'm going to try and use Slice X to uh, mess around with the vocals a little bit.
right, so this is what I came up with. I was just cooking there low key. And uh, so we have this little loop now with the vocal chop. And so what I want to do now is find like in between those little high pitches, I want like a female saying like a word. Like Alright, so I found some cool samples. I'm so hyped about this. I was just like making the bass stank face. Listen to this. It's a little muddy, right? We're gonna clean it up. We're gonna clean it up. But this is what it sounds like. Oh shit. There's a couple different layers to this vocal thing. So the first one is this little atmosphere. So that needs to be quieter, and then we added this piece, and then this. Alright, I can't use this vocal again. I've used this vocal like 15 times, but it sounds so good in this context. This is what it is. Is it We need to give it its own little thing, but I, I can't keep using this thing, man. Is it us? Is it So I don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm adding this stabbing piano to the break to kind of widen the chords a little bit. Sounds like this. use the sample guys i can't not use it it sounds too good i have to keep it in there and i i think the song has come out by the time this video comes out so i've already used this as well so i can't use that again like what am i supposed to do here i don't know what to do let's reverse it let's reverse it and hope nobody notices is it We need that vocal to like have the greatest reverb ever on it. It, it needs to have the most beautiful extended reverb of all time. Is it us? Try this. Is it This is sounding sick. Imagine that break when it's finished. This isn't even finished yet. This is after doing like 20 minutes of this. Imagine what this is gonna sound like when it's finished. All right, so now I'm gonna show you a little trick. To make this break more energetic, we're gonna add hi-hats and we're gonna add claps and we're gonna add atmospheres. Let's do it. This is how I'm doing the hi-hats right here. Don't worry about the side chain. It's not important at the moment. A little bit of OTT and some EQ, just like that. Maybe even more high-end, to be honest with you. Nothing else, just the hi-hats. Is it? So then add a clap on top of that, John. We're gonna put it on every other note.
coming together. Coming together. For anyone, there's always going to be one person, right? There's always going to be one person that's going to be, you know, bitching and complaining in the comments about the mixing. I'm going to do it at the end, okay? That's just how the workflow works with me. I do all of the mixing at the end, all right? So we're just getting the idea out, and then we do the mixing at the end. So before you start smashing your keyboard and frothing at the mouth over it, chill out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to it, okay? Added uh, a little bit of reverb automation just on the mix level nothing crazy this this thing right here um, on the vocal so that the vocal is clean when it starts and it removes a lot of the muddy reverb and then once she stops singing then the reverb comes in again with the mix level uh, very aggressively to give it that really wide ambient talent that I'm going for so you have this now I'll actually I'll mute it and solo it so you can hear it with just the piano is it I'm going to add a pad just to widen this break up. Is it So let's go back to our task and let's see, does that match the image? Uh, I want to hear this part first and then I want to play the other part and see if they match. Is it I think that is pretty sweet. So now I'm going to do something funky and I'm going to create a cool little uh, uh, 8 bit ARP thing, and uh, I think it's going to sound pretty nice. Okay, so that gives us a good base to work with. Now I'm gonna go through and select the notes that I want to be changed. So you guys saw how I ended up with that. That's just some um, delay with uh, the eight signature timing. And then we have the, uh, the fab filter. It's cut at 300, might change that later on. And then uh, there's some reverb there if we want it. I haven't put it on. It's got a filter on it as well. And then some OTT right here and I just went into the actual like preset and just kind of changed around these parameters a little bit and uh, I wanted that to sit on top of this chord let's see if it works it might not is it Okay, that's better. I want it to be barely audible. It just needs to be a layer. It doesn't need to be the main thing. All right, so we're building off of that, which is really nice. Uh, to make this even wider, even more professional sounding, let's get some more pads in here. To match with the theme of the song, the way I'm selecting pads is finding stuff that sounds dreamy. So for example, Right, very airy, lots of sparkly stuff in there, and that's what I'm looking for. I actually think this sounds better with the vocal chop we made. It needs to be a little louder, right? It's not loud enough now, and I, I might have to like copy and paste it and put it in another channel, but 
uh, it's... I'll do it this way. I'll play the piano, you can hear the vocal chop. I think it suits it better. making a new vocal chop for the break because the old one um the the channel in the mixer it just it just doesn't match i need to make a new custom one to match the break better So the saw chord is really nice, but I think I need to break it up into the triplets because I think it just matches the, the break better. I don't think I can have this be one extended chord. It's too muddy. more pads. To make the pluck of the chords hit harder, adding a snare on top of it, that's going to give it that ticking sound. Just piano and the snare, this is what you get.
right, so the little tricks that I did there, we obviously added the new piano, then we added the snare clicking on top of it, we added some pads as well. There's one more pad I wanna add, and a guitar I think would add really nicely in there. So I have this stone bank pack that has this guitar loop in it, it's this one. All right, so I'm gonna play the piano. With the guitar. I think it would be really cool if we took the guitar and turned it into a chord. So those are both in the same channel. We, this is just an atmosphere, so we can load our atmosphere channel state. Leave a little bit of the bass in, and I think that's really gonna complement that, as well as there's a virtual riot pad I really like to use. Uh, there's two of them. There's this one. And that one. I think the dream step is going to work for today. Since this is going to be an actual song, let me do this the way I would normally do it, is I'd add some sort of like sweeping thing in here just to help this transition a little smoother on the ears. So it'd be like this. Is it All right, so I'm just making the build up now. So literally all I've done is taken one piece of the vocal that I liked and then added it right after the break and just made a volume automation clip. I should move that up for you guys so you can see that right there. So you can see the volume goes down, completely fades out, and then it comes in with the one note and then it swoops back in and then that's our little pre-drop right there. So I... I'm not big on making my own risers or anything like that. I just use loops for the risers because uh, they're all the same thing, right? So uh, I've been liking the Skybreak ones recently. Sometimes I use the Sharks one as well, but the Skybreak ones are pretty cool. I think it would be really cool if we added like uh, a Game Boy like little bit crush piano right before the drop. So I'm going to do that. Maybe no drums. All right, uh, so now, since I already started the buildup, I might as well finish it for you guys. It's not anything crazy. So usually you want to have hi-hats in the buildup, but you don't want to have a whole lot of bass. So we'll just like, okay, this that's going to bother me. Move that over there. I won't go crazy into detail or anything, but so what I'm going to do is add a parametric EQ2, which is this thing right here. And uh, I am going to go to this left one right here, get that shape. I'm just dragging down the mouse if you're wondering how I'm doing that. Um, and then I'm going to do like a little shape like this. I want it to slope off a little bit. And so uh, then we're going to go to frequency. This moves the thing left and right. And so I'll right click that, go to create automation clip. Then down here, right where our little break is, that's our bit crush piano right there. We wanna have this sweep in at the end. And what this is doing is it's taking the low end bass of the song and it's cutting it out right in the buildup and right before the drop. So our drop doesn't have any bass in this section and that allows the other bass to hit much harder. So we don't want this EQ on the whole song because parametric EQ2 changes the sound of uh, whatever it's applied to, if you haven't noticed that before. So we don't want that on at all. So we're gonna mute it, and then it's only gonna turn on during the drop. So that's why I did the create automation clip on the mix level is because we turned it to 100% on the drop like this. And so now what we're gonna do is also add a stereo effect. So we're gonna add the fruity stereo enhancer, go to this knob on the side here, and we're gonna right click it and go to create automation clip and then uh, copy this value, the 50%, because we wanna go back to that. During this point right here, bar 40, 
uh, probably even later, probably like bar 41, right at the end, we're going to have this buildup transition to completely almost mono. And it's going to be mono right here. You're going to hear what this sounds like in your ears right now. Very, very wide as opposed, or very narrow as opposed to this. Right? So uh, we're making it very, very thin because we want it to crash really hard when the drop comes in. So now I'm going to go to my master channel and I'm going to right click this. I'm going to go to create automation clip and this master volume is going to be quieter throughout the whole song. I'm going to put it all the way on track 50, put it all the way down here. This is going to be quiet throughout our whole song, except for when the buildup happens, we're going to increase the volume of the song. This is a trick that a lot of professional producers use to make their drops appear to hit harder. So I'm going to start our song let's say 74%, right? We're gonna trick everybody and think that the song is mastered at full volume when really it's only been playing at 74% the whole time. And then at the buildup, we want this to go to the max volume, which uh, the default value in FL Studio is 80, 79, 80, whatever that is. I'm just gonna type it in because I can't do it. 0 0.8. All right, so that's our default value. So you're gonna see it's going to slowly, slowly climb to 80% right at the end. And what I like to do to make it very apparent, I just copy and paste the 74% and I put it right there at uh, bar 42. So um, now our drop is going to hit much harder. So our whole song is going to be in 74% volume. And then right at this last moment, it climbs, it rises and it builds up to that full peak of 80% where it meets the zero dB threshold. All right, so now what I do in the buildup, I'm not gonna do it in this video because it's just straight up boring for you guys, is I would just find risers like this stuff. And then maybe a long one as well like this. You just drag those in there and you cut the low ends, but I've been recording for a while now, so I'm gonna call it here. Um, so. Yeah, we're gonna listen to it one more time all the way through. Just keep in mind, we haven't worked on this intro part all that much. Um, we really just did the build up and this today. So uh, yeah, that is gonna be it for this episode. Let's listen to it from the top. And uh, if you guys haven't already, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we appreciate everyone that does do that. And uh, yeah, let's take it from the top. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.